here. We're going to go to the next part so everybody can follow me again. Okay, we're all going to go into the distributive bargaining so anybody didn't make it, come on over. I'm going to wave to everybody here. Hello. Okay, everybody. Distributive bargaining. Let's go. Okay, seems like some people got lost on the way. So everybody should just kind of follow us, I guess. So let me text everybody. We are in part four now. Is this part four? If you didn't mark in part four. Second. Okay, here comes some more people. Nice. Addison, very good. Okay, while well, we're waiting here, we can do a little bit of talking. So, I want to make sure everybody's watching the online video lectures and you're getting ahead on your homework. You don't want to get behind on your homework because your homework's to make the videos, right? It's not always so easy because you got to plan your time carefully. To quickly review then, so far what we've done is over the last few weeks we've looked at how to make your goal package. Remember the goal package? How to choose your strategy and now we're going to look at what's called distributive okay so you get more and more people here still a lot of missing okay well, I'm going to go into the room then let's everybody follow me into room number one Everybody's here. Okay, still it seems like a lot of people are getting lost easily. It's kind of strange. Okay, we're gonna just go ahead and move ahead then. We're running out of time today, so this is the vocabulary we're looking at. I'm gonna fly up here. You can fly up if you want to also. And here what we're looking at is the vocabulary for distributive bargaining. And what are some of the really good words? Let me see if I can pick out something that's really, really good. I think that maybe... Maybe one of the best words here would be... Maneuver. That's a good word there. Maneuver. So, in a distributive bargaining situation, if 
you saw the lecture, you understand what a distributive means. Distributive means basically win-lose. And so, when we do things like words like deadlock, that means you cannot move forward. Conflict means it's hard to find a solution. Um, final and firm offer, ultimatum. These are all really good words for distributive bargaining. If you look at these words, there are very many words about win-lose. So, you take a look at those when you get time. If there's any questions, you just push the talk now. You can ask me a question. And if there's no question, we're going to move on to the next section, which is the introduction. So, everybody follow me. Let's go over to the introduction. Okay, everybody. Okay, everybody here? I think we're getting more and more people showing up. Okay, that's good. Looking good. Alright, so I think we already went over this in the lecture, this part here. And what was the example I used? What's a really good example of distributive bargaining? Can somebody push the talk and tell me what's a really good example of distributive bargaining from the book? If you're going to eat something, what's a good example from the book? Just push the talk and say, say what you think. Anybody? Just push the talk and say, what's a good example of distributed bargaining? If you're going to eat something. Lisa? Hello, Lisa. Hello. Can you tell me what's a good example if you're going to eat something of distributive bargaining from the book? I want to eat pizza. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, good. Now, why was pizza a good example? Because we only had one piece, remember? So we only had one piece. So if somebody eats the one piece, then it's gone and the other person doesn't get it, right? You can also think of a big round piece of pizza, a big round pizza, the whole pizza. It's round, right? 360 degrees. And so, if you cut one piece of pizza out and you give it to someone, that means someone else does not get it, right? If you cut the pizza in half and you give half to me, that means someone else does not get half, right? So that's the idea of distributive bargaining, win-lose. And remember in my lecture I talked about this, I said, well, you know, 
win lose sounds bad, doesn't it? Because in business, we're always talking about uh, win win, right? Win win. But actually, it's not that easy. In most business situations, win lose is very very normal. And if you want to win win, that's good, good for you. But if the other side wants to win lose, and they don't tell you because it's their secret strategy. Remember, strategy is secret. And what's going to happen? You think the other side may be collaborating, but actually they're competing, and then you're going to lose. So it's very, very tricky, right? So you should always think inside your group, inside your company, inside your team, inside your brain. Always think that the other side is trying to do distributing. Always believe that, even though they may tell you. That Okay, so basically that was the example there, the pizza example. So let's go ahead and move on. So let's go to the dialogue room. So everybody, follow me. We're going to the dialogue room. <laughs> Maybe everybody will catch up with us in a second. But in this example, this was a business example, a little bit more complicated than the family example, right? So Alex and Fred are talking about the business, and I think one thing we saw here was. It's very hard when you're negotiating to know what is the other side's strategy, and that's really in the last part the point I wanted to make to you is that it's easy. This is my strategy. My strategy is competition. So the other side should be competition too. Well, no, that's not true, and they don't tell you what their strategy is. They never tell you, or if they do tell you, you can be pretty sure that they're not being honest. So, what can you do? Figure out the strategy they have. How do you do that? Step by step, as in this example up here. You can see that they negotiate step by step, and they kind of test each other. Are you competing? Are you collaborating? Are you avoiding? And so they test each other. Each sentence, learning a little bit more. And so when you play your RPG game, that's something you're going to have to do. You're going to have to try to guess what is the other side's strategy, and of course, your strategy you should know. You can always change your strategy, of course, and that's pretty reasonable. In fact, you can think that maybe you begin by saying, "Hmm, I have two questions. One question is how important is the outcome. One question is how important is the relationship." Maybe you begin by thinking the relationship is really important, but then after you negotiate a little bit, you find out the other side you don't like them very much, or they're not going to actually be good for your future. So you change. If you change, and you also change them, keep it secret. And that's this dialogue here. Okay, everybody. So we're going to run over to the next room. Word practice very quickly. So follow me. Okay, hello, hello. We're all in here for the word practice room.
The one word, of course, for sure, remember everybody, is the word distributive. Okay? Not an easy word to say in English. Very key, distributive. So, could you all push the talk and practice that word with me a little bit? Push the talk and say the word distributive. Distributive. Okay, good. Everybody, together, try distribute. Just push the talk and try distribute. Distributive. Good. Distributive. Good. Distributive. Um, yeah, not bad. You can try a little bit better. Distributive. Push the talk, push the talk and just say the word distributive. Because why is this word so important? Because I'm going to always be talking about it. Okay? So negotiations, one of them is distributive or win-lose. So in the future I want to be sure you understand what am I talking about when I say the word distributive. Okay, so you ready? We're all gonna say it together. Wait, wait a second, I'll tell you when. So when I count down from five, I want everyone push the talk and say the word distributive. Five, four, three, two, distributive. Ah, good, 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 good. Okay. Good. All right, let's move on to the next move now. That's the most important word we need to know. Okay, so let's go. Okay, everybody. Okay, so wait for some people to show up over. Probably just look at this section now and then we'll wrap up for the day. So just a couple more minutes as everybody catches up. It gives people some instructions here how to follow us. Go to, so I'll try to get them to come to me over here by using go to. Okay, let's see. Okay, getting a few more people in, very good. While we're waiting here, I can talk to a couple people. How about... Here. Ying... Ying Ju Zero... Uh, Ying Ju Zero Six Zero Three. Hello. Uh, I like your avatar. Your avatar has no hair. Why does your avatar have no hair? Your avatar... Oh, okay. Something went wrong with my computer. Your hair fell off. <laughs> okay. 
I know that one of our students, Mo, Mo I the girl, she's, she, her avatar is bald. <laughs> okay. Alright, well, I think, um, still waiting for a few people. Some people seem to have gotten lost. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. We can come over here to the uh, monitor. Clearly, you can fly on up. So you can fly up if you need to and come on over to the monitor. Yeah, there we go. Good. everyone to really pay attention to really work on this this week is to understand these charts here these pictures these pictures are a little bit confusing a little bit hard to understand but they're super important for negotiation now, if you have a question just push the talk and you can ask me a question now, you can stop me at any time because I'm worried you don't understand these pictures right some of them are pretty important and remember, the most important thing I think you need to keep in mind is what information is secret and what information is public, right? So if you go to buy a product, usually it has a price. That's public information, or what we call the list price, or the retail price, or the opening offer. Maximum that you're going to be willing to spend. That's your secret, right? And what's your target? That's also your Secret. So your resistance point, your target point, these are your secrets. And the other side has their secrets too, right? So I really want you to spend time looking at pictures and understanding from the buyer's perspective what is the situation and from the seller's perspective what is the situation. And often I find students get confused. It just even everybody myself too sometimes if you're thinking of the buyer sometimes you're thinking of the seller it's easy to get mixed up right remember the seller has an opening price the seller has the list price the buyer does not have an opening price but the buyer can make an opening offer right he can say well your price is 100 but I will only pay 50 so I want you to look at these carefully and then I want you to also think from the buyer and from the seller perspective. How does this work? Okay, so before we wrap up today, I want to ask, on this section here, these pictures here, which are really important, does anybody have any question? If you have a question, just push to talk and ask, my, ask your question of me. Any questions? If we don't have any questions, then I'm going to say for today's class, that's kind of the main point. You have two more homeworks you have to do this week, and that is two more videos. We're trying to speed things up now so that we do it faster and faster. Okay, if you do have a question, you can stay here for a little bit. I'll be here for a few minutes after class. If you have a question, you can stay here and ask me. Otherwise, then we're going to wrap it up. I see a lot of people are already kind of wrapping up because it's getting near noon time. Got to get ready for your other classes. Okay, 
So please do look at these pictures closely. I'll stay here for a few minutes if you have a question.